like a bad guy. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So this is my long overdue uh, beginning to my entire series review of my favorite TV show ever, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I have, uh, as you all know, if you've been subscribed to my channel for some time since the very beginning or since i've had this intro rather i know a lot of people are a big fan of my channel intro i do appreciate all the positive feedback i get on my intro uh if you've been following the channel miss subscriber of mine for quite some time you know in the intro of my of my channel i do have a picture of buffy the vampire slayer featured uh just kind of a, just small pictures the intro just kind of has pictures of things i'm interested in as far as like my primary uh pieces of horror and tv and buffy is one of the things that i have in the intro so I felt that if I'm going to have her in the intro, I need to have more videos up on Buffy. So I'm going to be beginning my series review of the entire Buffy the Vampire series, uh, beginning with season one today. Now, for fans of the Buffy series, go ahead and just give this video a thumbs up. If you already are a fan of Buffy, you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because I'm sure you guys should like any and all buffy content and i'm sure you always like to hear new things from people who haven't done a review on the series yet so getting into season one season one of this uh very amazing show uh, i i honestly give it an eight out of ten season one of this of this show was a little bit wonky a bit um i believe the series itself came at a time where another show was getting canceled and it was kind of like a mid-season replacement for that cancellation uh, Josh Whedon had tried to do a Buffy film in the early 90s with Chris Christy Swanson I believe was the one who played Buffy then in the series it's Sarah Michelle Gellar she's more uh, known for the role now and that film ultimately failed because the studios and all these other things contributing to it added a comedic element to it and that's not really what Joss Whedon was going for with this TV series we kind of get a dosage of what he was actually going for and it makes me kind of wonder what could that film actually have been like had the studio involvement not have brought all this comedic things into it the TV series uh, going into season one we follow Buffy Buffy Summers who is a young girl who has been chosen to defend defend uh, the world against vampires demons and the forces of darkness she's part of a long lineage of women who have who have who have passed this power down the power has been passed down to a single woman chosen to defend the world against uh, these supernatural things that exist in this universe they are all referred to as slayers uh, the series begins to explore the the history of the slayer as the series goes on we find out where the slayer comes from all that good stuff but she moves to a new town with her mother uh joyce summers who i believe is one of the best on-screen mothers that you'll ever find in the tv series uh they move to a new town called sunnydale for a fresh start after buffy has been kicked out of her old high school for burning down the gym an event that takes place in the actual buffy movie so the series itself is a is picking up where that movie left off uh, but th this series is much, much more superior to the uh, to the film for obvious reasons. Uh, you get more time to s you get more time spent with Buffy. The characters develop more. Uh, Joss Whedon's getting to do what he actually planned on doing here in the film. Uh, it's just very or, or in the series rather the TV series versus what he wanted to do for the film. It's just a very uh, kind of fun, wonky first season. Uh, you kind of have this monster of the week vibe. Uh, Buffy moves to this new town. She's looking for a fresh start. She's just a young girl, only 16 years old. She doesn't really want to be the Slayer, but she comes to accept her duties as the series progresses. She ends up on her first day of school. She meets her new watcher, uh, Rupert Giles, uh, played by Anthony Stewart Head. And she's just been on the run from her duty. She ha kind of has no interest in being the Slayer because to her, it's she she's just a girl she's just a girl she has not she has no idea what what all this stuff is supposed to mean really she she understands uh all she understands is that there's there's this there's this duty that's being asked of her she comes to embrace it though and of course she embodies the role of what she was chosen to do fate has chosen her to to save the world over and over again from things that uh lurk in the dark uh, she just wants to party though, kind of have be be a teenage girl, date boys, uh, fantasize about cute boys, be a cheerleader, be the popular girl. It's just very, very, very interesting to see in the first season how we just kind of spend time getting to know these characters and relating to them. Uh, the whole entire first season was kind of just like how I like how they use monsters to kind of like represent the the terrors of of adolescence and being a teenager in high school and navigating through high school you have all these different things that are discussed online dating the or the dangers of online dating 
uh, having a first crush or having a having a boy or having a crush on a boy or a girl. You have that. You have the mean girl in Cordelia Chase, who is kind of like the most popular girl in the school. Uh, you have that cliche. Just very, 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 very uh, simple. The first season itself is very simple. It, it does its job. It's not one of the better seasons. It's a good introductory season. Uh, would I say that this is a skippable season if you were to compare it to the the season that come afterward? Because season two is when this show really takes off. Season two and onward, uh, with a few hiccups in season seven, or a lot of hiccups actually in season seven, that's when Buffy really got a lot of people's attention. Season one was a good was a good uh, beginning mark, but then it just picks everything up so much more so, and it just runs all the way through to the very final series finale in. 2003 uh season one in itself i feel like it was a very for what it was a very solid season uh i like the aspect of what is going on in the town and what joss whedon is kind of working with here the town is built on top of what is called a hell mouth it's an area where the barriers between earth and several hell dimensions have created kind of like a portal and the town is built on top of this thing which is why uh the vamp there's vampires and demons and all this stuff are drawn to it there's kind of like mystical energy that they all kind of detect that 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 these supernatural things can kind of pick up on and so they gravitate for they gravitate towards it to feed off of its energy uh and of course it just caused mayhem in the town uh but in my all honest opinion of the first season i think it's very well very well done for what it is i think the villain in the season the master uh, played by Mark Metcalf, I think he he does a phenomenal job in his role. I think he was a good first villain f for the overall show. Uh, I think he's one of the more no notable villains coming out of the series overall. I wish he would have had like a longer arc because the first season it's only twelve episodes. So the master, while he, while he is still like one of the better villains, we didn't get to spend as much time with this villain compared to the other ones just because this season is only 12 episodes. Uh, but I like the dynamic here between Buffy and her fear of of uh, facing the master and her overcoming that fear. I just, I love everything about the first season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar's portrayal of Buffy. I love Willow, Willow Rosenberg played by Allison Hannigan. Uh, I just, I love the the soon to be called scooby gang if you will they call themselves the scooby gang i believe xander uh was one was the one to kind of give them that title it's the group of buffy and her friends she has willow who is a, who assists her with her slayer duties and she has xander uh so she kind of feels ice and another thing that really sticks out to me with this show is how they always there's always a payoff there's a payoff to everything so in the very first episode Buffy is not wanting to go through her duties of being a slayer at all but then when she she has some friends it kind of makes it all worth it because now she has people that are backing her up she's not really alone but still she kind of does feel alone because of the fact that uh there's no one else out there doing this like her it's just her by herself she's the only one chosen to defend the universe against these things something that she didn't ask for uh, and then there's a there's a payoff in the very 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 final season of this this whole idea of Buffy feeling alone and the idea of loneliness when it, the idea of what being the Slayer brings in terms of loneliness loneliness uh, that all is just visited over and over again throughout the series and then Buffy gets a big payoff in the end of the series where she's no longer alone in the battle against evil and if you if you've seen the entire series you know what I'm talking about and I will get into more details on that when I review season seven but let me know what you guys think about the season one uh what you think about season one of Buffy the Vampire Slayer are you a big fan of the series if you haven't already make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description I'll have links to all my social media accounts I'm on Facebook Twitter and Instagram you can message me there to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future with all that in mind guys I will see you in the next video video.